Hey, what's up, guys? It's Joel Benavides with the Squawk Out Podcast. It is the 13th of November, 2020, and it's 8.31 p.m. And uh, we're, uh, I'm kind of pulling double duty this week. I got two two podcasts coming on this week. I, I had uh, Reggie in the middle of the week, and now uh, we're joined by a, a guest that I'm really, really excited to introduce you guys to. Um, this is uh, Chris. And uh, Chris is a law enforcement. Well, he he's got a long history of working in law enforcement, and uh, and he got his start. I guess, geez, right out of high school, right? You you went to go be a, an MP. Pull that mic right up to your face, man. No, I, I joined the Marines at and uh, ten days after uh, left for boot camp. Ten days after graduation. Yeah, got and out, it, got out and then joined the sheriffs. Right. Oh, uh, okay. So, so, but you were an MP in the military, no, no, I correct? Was infantry, bro. Oh, infantry. Yeah. Why did I think you were an MP? Because I tried out for the MPs, but I wasn't old enough. Oh, okay. All right. All right. I, I feel you. Yeah, because MP was like my dream job. Dude. Oh, okay. So, I don't know why I thought you were an MP. Oh, you know what? I'm getting you mixed up with my brother. My brother was an MP. Um, and uh, and so after that, you uh, you became a sheriff. And, uh, and you've kind of, uh, we won't specify like the, the particular agency just for like privacy and stuff like that. But, uh, tell me about that. Like, what was the first, what, like, what was, what was training like? Um, what was like your first day on the job? Like, because I think people need to understand that, um, it's well right now with everything going on it's complicated as hell like there's a lot of shit in the news about cops and uh and it's not like every single cop is racist like this idea of institutional racism kind of like it's an oversimplification like it's a big oversimplification right so so the thought so the thought pull that mic up a little bit it'll pull back towards you there yeah or you, you can pull it back it'll pull back oh like it'll pull this. Oh, okay. There. Yeah, yeah. I think you're good. Okay. So, like, uh, when I when I understand what I understand to be institutional racism as defined by people on a particular side. Oh, cheers. So, oh, cheers, brother. Some good stuff, by the way. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, thank <laughs> you. I love this stuff. Bro. I love scotch, man. I like whiskey neat. So. Um. Uh, as defined by certain people, institutional racism is like um, we go to roll call, mm-hmm. and you know, right before right before we start a shift, and our supervisor tells us, "All right, you're gonna go out there and you're gonna arrest, or you're gonna go after this this particular group of people, and you have to arrest this many group of this color people, and do this, and you know, uh, to this group of people." And that is the basic definition is, is, is I can break it down as easy as I can break it down is my understanding. And it's like, it's like a set of parameters, right? Yeah. Okay. And so 17 years of doing this, I have not had one sergeant, not one, not one sergeant, not one corporal, not one captain, lieutenant tell us to go target a specific group, race, religion, anything. It's go out there. We've had this in this area, this in this area, this in this area, go get it done. Never have, 17 years of doing this, never once did we have ever anybody tell us to go after a certain group. Now, my training goes back to... I what, 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 have you heard anything in the news, like these talking heads, like on CNN or something like that, that... Um, that have have made those arguments and said well institutional racism exists because here or there or because of that reason like yeah they say it's because uh the um because a, uh because there's a certain uh a certain group that the the disparity of uh of uh like the amount of arrest like a gentrification like neighborhoods and so like they oh, put- gentrification to me that that's i i believe that that does take place i mean you're we're seeing it and down i mean we're seeing it but but like i mean like i guess my my question is do you do you think that there's like additional funding say that goes to departments in those neighborhoods or no not at all i don't don't see i mean we get we get grants 
we there is federal we do get federal grants uh -huh. annually like certain certain groups get uh, annual grants and they're federally funded and those funds are specifically for um there's they're, they're they call them up like mil, like you were in the military i was in the military right. they, they call them operations and they're operations for one thing and they're to target a specific um not a specific uh group of people but people a specific race or whatever yeah. type like uh, of criminal it could be sex offenders it could be gang members it could be drug dealers it could be prostitutes now it doesn't matter what color they are right or their their background the are brand. there like are there clusters like uh, i i think i looked one time you know i don't know what that website is where you can go and look at sex offenders in your neighborhood mm -hmm. and it plots it on a map yes. right are there areas where that's like i mean i think for that's what you're talking about right prevalent? you look at the yeah you look yeah. at the data and there's like a cluster here whether that cluster tends to be like on a bougie side of town or not is irrelevant to you you're just looking at the data is it yeah does, or, uh, it's not relevant at all because i mean they're I mean, hell, they're everywhere, dude. I mean, today it's, I mean. There's one right here. Have you seen? Like, like I, we, we should probably mention that we're neighbors, right? Yeah. But, uh, but we've also known each other for a long time. But the, the there's there's a there's a sex offender just there? down the street. Is he still there? I, thought I don't he moved I, out. I don't know. I don't know. But I saw it on the map. Like, I looked at the map. How long ago did you look at the map? Probably about eight nine months ago. Okay, he's still there because I looked it up like two years ago, and he that's was crazy. There. And there's another one like like yes, a few I'm, blocks yeah, away. Yeah, uh, that's insane, dude. Yeah. That's insane. I, I, and we I don't live it. like in a super shitty neighborhood. No, I mean, it's pretty really. nice. Um. So yeah, dude, that's nuts. Um. What uh? What was your first? Like, do you remember your first day on the job, like yeah, as a law enforcement day, officer? Was yeah. it was it was it like uh boring or no? Did, Oh, was, awesome. It, All right. No, yeah, it was, Hit me. It was on the south side. Uh, I was patrolling on the south side of San Antonio. And um, I don't, I'm not saying where I work, but. Right. It was, it was south of San Antonio. South we San should, Antonio. we should say it somewhere. Uh -huh. And uh, I would just, I mean, sh dude, I was, so I worked in the jail. Uh -huh. I, wor I worked in the jail. I did, I did, uh, I did some time in the jail working as a detention officer. And uh, then I, then I went and got my degree, and then I went to patrol. And my, fr I'll, I'll never. I mean, you are always gonna. It's like uh, the first time you lose your virginity, right? So you remember that. So uh, as opposed to the second time, no, yeah, right, as to the second time, yeah. So that was in Thailand, but I don't want to talk about that. Right now. <laughs> but no, so like, uh, you remember your first time. So my first night on the streets, um, yeah, it was a wild night, man. I mean, it, I mean, we're talking about south of San Antonio, and it was, I mean. Um, I caught a guy trying to break into a church. Uh, I just, it's about two thirty, three o'clock in the morning, dude's kicking in the, kicking in the doors to a church and I just drove up on it and I'm like, what the hell? Uh huh. And then of course, was, yeah, there wasn't a call or anything no, like that. It was not just, a call. I, uh -huh. was just on, I was on a proactive patrol uh -huh. where we're just driving around, just looking for stuff. There's right. reactive patrol where you get dispatched to a call for like suspicious persons, vehicles, whatever. That's reactive because you're reacting to a call for service. Mm -hmm. And then there's proactive where you have no calls, but you're just driving around looking for to, to avoid or to, to prevent. I'm sorry, pre preventative patrol, uh -huh. preventative patrol to prevent crimes from happening because we can prevent all day. I mean, people see a people see a, a patrol car and they're like, oh, dude, you know, I was going to break into this car, but. Why are these dudes around? Like, did they call them? You, you know, they you make criminals second guess themselves when you start driving up and down streets. So right, right, right. We call preventative patrol. So I was just on preventative patrol, and uh, there is no such thing as routine patrol. So that that is like a term the news media loves using. There's no such because it's, I've never heard. Oh, what? Why? Like, what? It, what is that? Nothing, what do they mean by that? Routine patrol is just kind of like oh, a regular shift. He's on routine because no two days in law enforcement are ever the same. I mean, almost 17 years doing this, and I've never had two days the same. It's so always something different. Oh, okay. So there's nothing routine about my job. So going back to the guy breaking into the so, church. Yeah, so he uh, breaking into the church, uh -huh. and that was my first arrest. And I was, and it was just breaking and entering. Did he say why he wanted to get into the church? Well, he, he wanted to confess his sins because his wife had just left him. So was he, he was he crazy? Was he, he like he was high as hell? Oh, uh, he okay. High as hell. Okay. So he he was high as hell, and so uh, we. Um, yeah, he was high. I mean, he was just high. We found drugs on him. 
course. Oh, okay. And uh, it's actually called so. State of Texas, it's there. It's burglary of a habit. It's burglary of a building, habitation, whatever. That's not like um, like the terms you uh, like the terms you hear like on on movies, uh, breaking and entering. It's it's called burglary of a burglary of a building, habitation, whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And there's no such thing as attempted burglary. So had he not made his way inside the doors, it would have just been criminal trespass. Did you guys have to fight him or anything no, like that? Not yeah. at all. What then, about what? Well, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, what about like some of the craziest shit you've dealt with? Like, oh, man, dude. Like, I think last week we were talking about uh, uh, just how th- shit has been with COVID. Mm-hmm. I was I was asking you how how things have been because of COVID and and just dealing with having to be a cop and then like having to like basically think like a nurse at the same time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like just be like aseptic and stuff like that. So, well, I mean, you know, I've been out of work for a few months because of my injuries. Right, right, right. So that kind of took me out of the the whole COVID pandemic thing. But before I got injured, it was all about, uh, I mean, to us, it's like, like. I don't know how specific you can get about particular cases. Not, not um, like, like, I, I, like I can't, I can't talk about names and stuff names. like that, but I can, I can talk about incidents. Okay. Yeah. So. Because I wanted to ask you about, uh, the, uh, the, the case where I guess you were responding and a, and a, and a dude was like, his mom had locked him in a, in a shed or something like that yeah. because he liked to do draw. Tell, yeah. <laughs> tell me about that. Like, well, cause he was dirty, right? That's how, how we got into that conversation. He yeah. was really dirty. Right. Yeah, so, and so you show up and you talk to the mom and she tells you, yeah, she, uh, yeah, that one, uh, I think, I think, well, that'll be left for another day. That okay. Was, that one, that one is now. Okay. So cases like we under, can, we, yeah, we can backtrack. That's under, fine. Under investigation. Like, yeah. I can't oh, okay. I get it. I get it. <laughs> but yeah, I, I knew. So, but the basic details was like the guy was a, uh, schizophrenic uh meth head as many of them are we could just we could yeah. just generalize General, at this point I mean, yeah. and say so, a and lot of the times you deal with schizophrenia and right so a lot of people i don't know if a lot of people know this but meth meth methamphetamine use or abuse actually has irreversible effects on the brain effects that you will never come back from I mean that the, the the chemicals that they use to make methamphetamines mm-hmm. literally eat your brain, and those people do not come back, and they'll never come back. They Are there don't. people that have recovered no. from from no long term meth? Long-term, oh, long term meth abuse. Long term uh-huh. meth abuse or use or whatever you want to call it. Mm. They will ninety nine point nine percent of the times always have some sort of mental health issues after long-term meth abuse. And typically what we found is it's schizophrenia um, or some other, you know, um, some other like very serious mental illness. Mental, yeah, mental yeah. illness. And it's irreversible. They'll not, ne- they'll never bounce back from it. Uh, yeah. I, like I've, I've done a lot of reading on that myself and I know that there's tons of tons of, well, not tons, but like a lot of mental health issues that this, I mean, it doesn't get better. You, you know, know what I mean? You know what trips, the, the, the one thing that trips me out about uh, methamphetamine use or like uh, people like people with schizophrenia is why do they always talk about demons and the devil? Oh, yeah, that's always, weird, dude, right? Always. And um, I can talk about this case because it was years ago and it, it's already closed. The guy was a... Um, he was a very upstanding citizen, great guy. I think he, I don't even think he had a parking ticket in his life. And he got testicular cancer. And the me- the medication that they were giving him led to schizophrenia. And so here you have- So he was taking the medication for what? The medication that he was taking for- Some other for, thing. For him fighting testicular cancer. Oh, gave him schizophrenia. No, it, it, may, it, may it, have it, given it him led, schizophrenia. It led to him eventually getting schizophrenia. No shit. The wildest thing I ever heard of. And the guy was 100%. He, he was a great guy, great husband, great father, great son to his parents. I mean, great guy all the way around. Right. He had a- uh, That's the thing about schizophrenia. It can happen to anybody with schizophrenia. It can happen to any time at any time. It can happen to anyone at any time, but the doctors attributed so it to the medication he was on. 
And I took the call because he had uh, he was barbecuing with his family. He had an episode, and he destroyed his like hundred thousand dollar kitchen with a hammer. He had the food. He he brought it, he brought the food inside that he barbecued with his dad. They've been barbecuing for the last two hours. Brings the food inside the house, and then just just commences to destroy this kitchen. So, but that wasn't the first act of destruction he had committed in his house. And the the weird thing is is I started asking myself, like, he started writing 666 and the devil lives here. And he started writing all this. He had, like, a, a, like a million-dollar house. And, like, he was writing on the doors inside his house, 666, the devil lives here, the demon's inside me. And, like, I've seen, like, that is, like, the common denominator with a lot of people with schizophrenia is, like, demon... It has to do with the devil or demons. Like, I don't know what the correlation... I want to know, like, what the correlation is between uh, demons and the devil and schizophrenia. Like, I yeah. don't get it. I don't get it. I still don't get it. You know, that's like... Uh, pour, pour, some, pour, some, pour some more if you want. Uh, okay. Yeah, hit that. We're, we're drinking scotch right now. Um, Good stuff. So, yeah, with the, the thing with schizophrenia, like... I and you and I get into these conversations all the time about like the metaphysical. No, I'm good. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. The like the metaphysical, the psychic, the ghost like aspects to all this stuff. Like, we're both really interested in that. But one of the things that I like I wonder about sometimes is our schizophrenics because of the unique nature of that men that particular mental illness. Like our schizophrenics um seeing things that were not kind of like when you pe people say that when you when somebody so, takes acid yeah. or like some kind of like hallucinogenic like it's not really making you see stuff that's not there but like it like it breaks down the filters that our brain naturally has and so, they're seeing shit so that, with schizophrenia what we would in the police academy we have it's mandatory that you take crisis intervention training uh-huh and that that's a mandatory course you cannot crisis pass. intervention oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Crisis like, intervention yeah. Training. Uh -huh. and you cannot become a police officer or deputy or any kind of peace officer in the state in any in the state of texas without taking the minimum 40 hour cit training course mm -hmm. and part of the course is they'll take a student they'll sit him in the middle of the classroom and you got what 40 other police officers cadets recruits whatever you want to call them and they have two deputies or two officers, uh, one in each ear, and the instructor is trying to communicate with the deputy or officer or cadet sitting in the chair, mm -hmm. and he's got two guys talking in his ear. And the instructor is yelling commands at the person sitting in the chair, trying to get him to understand and do what he says, like stand up, put your hands up, do this, do that. And the guy, the, the student is looking at the instructor, but he's got two people yelling in his ear, and he can't understand anything because he's trying to focus on this guy, this guy, and, the, and this is part of the training. This is part of the training, uh -huh. and there have been schizophrenic. There's we used not. I don't want to say used. That sounds ugly. We actually got our training. We received our training program or intel from people with schizophrenia, and they said that that training is exactly what they experience. A, a police officer could be talking to them and telling them, "Get up! I need to talk to you. Stand up." And they're hearing actual voices. So they did a brain scan on a schizophrenic who allowed himself to be scanned. Uh -huh. And I think it's the what I mean. You're the frontal cortex the, the, is the, the, the is the part cortex? that thinks. Prefrontal cortex is the part that like does all the higher yeah, thinking. So the yeah. prefrontal cortex shoots sparks of electricity. Right. When like right now I'm talking. When to we're you. having like thoughts, like yes. yeah. And it's shooting sparks and these uh these uh the voices were making it go yeah, all crazy so the yeah. voices are so real to them that it's indistinguishable so like if i was hooked up right now you're talking to me mine are shooting sparks all right yeah place. you see it a color yeah schizophrenics and have nobody talking to them and the sparks are shooting wow. that's how real these voices are to them they are actually hearing comprehending and listening to somebody talk to them, somebody that's not there. There's a video on YouTube exactly like that. Well, I mean, it's not like a real world, like real world training or like you have people talking in your ear, but there's a video on YouTube and it's like, I think it's called schizophrenic simulation. 
And so it's got this, like, it's like first person. Oh, they put a 3D camera? It, yeah, it's like just a camera on top of some dude's head. And he's walking around his house and he ordered pizza. And, like, it has voices. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Yes, yes, yes. And, yes, like, yes. The, the, the wife or the whoever will come home and they'll be like, hey, I was calling you all day. Why didn't you answer? And, like, there's a voice in, like, the dude's ear and he's like, don't He'll, fucking believe her, yeah. you know, and shit. Don't like, listen yeah. to her, fucking, or, you know, punch her in the face. Do this. I'm do glad this. you brought that. Yeah, and that's it's, schizophrenia. And, it, and yeah. for some reason, the voices they hear are always violent. Like, it's always violence. It's like, and they can't, like, it's not like, oh, well, you can't, like, do pre-training and say to yourself, oh, well, if I ever start hearing voices, I'll just know that I have schizophrenia and I won't believe it. Like, part of the hallucination is not just, like, see, hearing not, the voices, but, but, see, but believing it. It's not really, I wouldn't call it a hallucination because a hallucination is something that's not there. In a schizophrenic, in, 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 in their schizo brain, it's as real as anything. In their mind, it is real. Right. I mean, it, I mean it's well. That's my point: yeah. is that they believe it too. Yes. You know what I mean? Like I mean, the belief is is real. Yeah. You and, know what I mean? and it goes beyond belief because the brain is shooting sparks. Like if they're talking to somebody. Do you think that they're? I don't know. I don't like. I don't want to go too off far off the deep end. Yeah. But like, do you think that maybe they're hearing ghosts? Or like I mean, not that okay. you would know, not that we. No, 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 no. no. That's a good point because. My, so when I was alluding to why, it's always demons or devils. Right. I, I was making that point for a reason because why is it always demons and devils? Why isn't it like Abraham Lincoln and George Washington or? Um, right. That's what they always know, say on the movies. It's like, oh, who, you know, like, uh, yeah. who, who was he talking to? Abraham Lincoln? Like they make fun of schizophrenics yeah. that way. You yeah. know, and it's never that it's always, it's like, I mean, in my case, I'm not, I don't, I, I, I mean, to use words like always, that's kind of, you gotta be careful. Right. I mean, right. You have to be careful using words. You always like, have to disclaim everything yeah. at the beginning of the podcast. I have a disclaimer yeah, about this so, shit. Yeah. I mean, you have to be careful using words like always, or it's, or it, it never changes. Speaking in absolutes, yes. which we're going to have a so, problem with if we keep on yes. drinking scotch, right? Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> speaking in absolutes is like a very dangerous thing. So I hate to use the word always, but I've seen more times than not demons and devils associated with schizophrenia. And I, and me coming from the background that I have, yeah. as far and I'm not and it, it you know forget Christianity. Well, I, uh, I mean, we can talk about it too if you want. Yeah, we talk I, about religion if you want. So you know, Christianity, uh, Catholicism, just uh, Presbyterian, whatever, yeah. agnostic, atheist, whatever. I mean, all that out the window. Why is it always demons and devils? And I like want to know the correlation between what the is two. your okay and and again not speaking in absolutes this is purely hypothetical uh, speculation right but in your more like metaphysical tones it, you know when you're speculating on uh, spirituality so, so, uh, and stuff so, what do you think so what do you think it is okay so cop so law enforcement we don't deal in opinions right right Everything of course is yeah. back. so but I'd be lying. but you're a human being that but thinks I'm, but, yeah I'm a human off being. duty yeah yeah I'm a human being so. I take the case and I write my I write the report and it's just the facts of what took place. But I write the facts of what happened because I'm getting statements, I'm getting I'm getting evidence, I'm doing all this. But then outside the facts, outside the evidence, there's my human beliefs. Right. And my human beliefs tell me that given everything that I've studied in my 42 years of life, going across the world to different countries and doing things that I did in other continents and other, you know, places, I believe, and I'm not crazy. I mean, I, my therapist said I wasn't, so, um, I'm not, I'm not crazy, Yeah, yeah, yeah. but, um, I believe that these people genuinely are being affected by something supernatural because it, in my opinion, opinion, not fact, mm. in my opinion, right. It, it, it's, it's, it's too much. It's too much devils and demons. Right. So yeah. when it's too much of something, then it usually is. Right. Like, so, a, like it's not a, it's not likely that it's happening on accident. Yeah, so or how, it's a like how, like these people don't know each other. I've taken, I mean, I, I could take 20 cases of schizo dealing with schizophrenics in one year and every single one, like one guy carved 666 into his stomach with a razor blade. Yeah. And another guy carved Satan libs into his leg with a freaking knife. 
you know, another guy sharpened his fingernail to a, a fine point and he carved like a pentagram or a pentacle, whatever you want to call it, into mm. his chest. So all these people that are suffering with this disease, or not, not all these people, the people that I right, right, right. that are suffering with this disease are bringing dem- uh, the, 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 the demonic aspect yes. into it. So, it's so funny that you say that because... Um, I, one of my like more philosophical modes of thought or, you know, it was a day where I was thinking about a lot of shit. I put on, uh, on my Facebook, something along the lines of I'm friends with a, uh, a, a, a psycho, a psychologist, like a doctor, right. Or a psychiatrist. He works at, a, I think he works at a mental institution. I'm not sure. But, um, I, I, I wasn't even thinking about him. Right. I was just, I, I was just putting down something that I, something I had heard and I was like, you know what? I'm going to say something about this. And it was something along the lines of schizophrenia might not just be a mental disorder. You know, it's possible that these people are living in between two realities, in between two worlds. And he usually doesn't comment on stuff like that. And he didn't cut, co- but you know, for him to like something, he's one of those guys that's not very active on social media, but for him to like, make a movement on social media, you know, it's significant for him, you know, on his level. And, uh, and he liked it and he reached out to me and he was like, yeah, dude, I felt what you said, but we didn't get into a like huge conversation about it, but it was interesting to me that he was like, you know, on it and he studies this or that's his profession. And you won't find too many medical professionals that will engage. Yeah. That that will admit to having, because. Oh, they will. They'll just have those conversations with you on the side or like on the down low, like don't tell anybody. Scientific, like. Everything is based on science right. with them. And yeah. science is, to a lot of people, science is an absolute. Like, it is like... Well, it has to be, right? It, it like, it, be. like in it, order to test a hypothesis yes. and know, you have to because have it checked it is, and all that. Because science is like the ability of researching and knowing and understanding the way... Knowing you're that like, you're right. How do you yes. know that you're right? Yeah. So, to for somebody like a, a professional, medical law enforcement, to... I mean, if I were to write in my report that... You know, um, the case being forwarded to case being forwarded to CID for investigation into possible demonic possession. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> dude, can you imagine what? I mean, I, I would probably they'd probably be like, uh, we're gonna we're gonna go see a psych and psych, yeah, we're gonna, we're, you're gonna go to psyche bound, you're done. Yeah, you know. So I mean, it's huh. I mean we can I mean like you said, I'm a human being for so that's one thing people need to realize is that law enforcement. We're not robots. Right. We bleed. We have hearts. We, um, we are humans, and we do have very human thoughts. And a lot of this comes into play. I mean, when it comes to reports, it's the facts of what took place, and we write those facts down. And but we still have our opinions and our beliefs of, okay, this is what really happened. But we have to write what was given to us, you know. And then it's not up to us to make the determination. Those cases get forwarded to somebody else, and then the determination is made down the road. It's, it's not that. us. Yeah. You know, so, but yeah, man, I mean, it's just why? Why is it always demons and devils? I wanna, I wanna know. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's super weird. And, and maybe that's a conversation for another day, you know, cause it's, that's fucking deep. You know what I mean? That's like a, you know, maybe, maybe I'll have a, a priest on or, a, or an dude, exorcist at some point, and bro, then I'll bring I, you and over, and dude. I'm telling you, like, this guy, this this upstanding citizen. No, I'm, not, I'm not saying that every that people with schizophrenia are not upstanding, but this guy was 30s, thir- late 30s, never been in trouble, not even a traffic ticket in his life. You know, never in trouble. Anyway, and like because of medications he took, led to schizophrenia, and he starts carving six 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 and pentagrams and satanic faces and satanic mouths inside the doors inside his house and scared the hell out of his wife and kids there's a so why yeah why? i mean why dude this guy was like his whole family was christians you know they went to like some big christian church in san antonio and you know and then all of a sudden one day to the next he's like everything's about um demons and the devil yeah why you know and that was i mean for a lot of like and I know it's it's the same across the board. For me, it's always there's always one case that makes me question, like the very 
fabric of our existence. And I've had so many of those cases where like, I've questioned like, how the hell can people be this evil? How the hell can, how the, I mean, is it demons and devils? Is there this much heat? And I mean, just so many things. Dude. Yeah. Can you, know? you think of anything? And I don't know, man, like, can you think of anything that's like super evil where you left work? Like, cause I asked you about the craziest day, right? Yeah. Um, well, can you think of anything that's not under investigation or that you can discuss that, that is just like one of those things It like, it let, it led you to question, you know, belief, reality. Um, was there like maybe like a brutal murder along these schizophrenic lines so or seven, so 17 years, you can imagine, what i'm gonna see a lot of shit so, yeah yeah so it's a lot of shit so i think one of the most um one of the most heinous like i mean um it it caused two two people quit their jobs um one of them is still seen a psychiatrist to this day uh i mean it, it was and it, it was big news i mean it, it was big news and um it was I mean, hell, dude, the judge cried. I mean, you don't have to discuss no, it if you don't want to. the case is yeah. over. Okay. And the people are in prison for life or um, they're in prison for life. The case is over. I'm not going to say names. Right, but right. Yeah, people, I know. people who live around here will pretty much know what I'm talking about. But the judge cried when the the judge cried when the, the evidence was presented. And this family tied up their child for 24 days. He survived 24 days with no food and water. But he was so young, and so he was, I think, uh, four four years old. But because his heart was so strong, he was able to survive 24 days. And he literally turned into a skeleton before passing. He turned into a, a living, breathing skeleton before passing. Oh, he passed? He passed away. Oh, okay. But he turned into a skeleton before passing away. That, that sing, singular incident caused two cops to quit the judge cried seeing the seeing the evidence i mean and did, i did, didn't work the case uh -huh. i'm not going to pretend to have i didn't have any part in the case um but i did work another case i did work another case where they found a four-year-old little girl um my sergeant called me at five o'clock in the morning i wasn't scheduled to be in until eight o'clock a.m he called me at 5 a.m. and why I was awake, I have no idea. But I woke up to his phone call and he says, where are you at? I'm like, I'm at the house getting like, what the hell, I'm at the house. Yeah. And he's like, I need you to come in and I need you to go to this address. And I was like, okay. I was like, what's going on? And um, a four-year-old, uh, four another four-year-old little girl, mm -hmm. they found her in the front yard of this house on uh, on on in South San Antonio and she was bleeding from parts of her body that should not be bleeding at four years old. Oh my God. So they automatically assumed the worst, right? right. But it was, thank, thank God it wasn't that, but right. it was, well, I mean, I don't want to say thank God it wasn't that, but thank God it wasn't that, but it was, but it was something heinous. But it, yeah. it was something heinous. I mean, um, her liver was lacerated. Her, oh my God. Her stomach was, cause she was, uh, her, she was stomped. She was stomped and it and it cut her organs and it was causing blood to come out of certain areas and so that day I'll never forget. Fuck people, dude. That's why. That's why sometimes I'm like, fuck people. Like I hate yeah, people dude. sometimes, dude. So, okay. So can you imagine us? I mean, we're not allowed to hate people, bro. We're not. We're not allowed to hate anybody. I mean, I find I'm so okay. So let me just. I get it. Let me just. I get let, it. Let me, let, me, let me just tell. So. I went to the I went to the start. I started at the beginning. My sergeant called me specifically because he knew how I felt about crimes against children. And he was like, we need to find like we need to find these people. We need to bring them to justice. And um so I was like, okay, so any good and I'm not saying I'm a good investigator. I'm not. I'm not going to pretend to be like the best. I'm not going to. Right. Do that. Yeah. You're not Dick but, Tracy, but no. I'm not <laughs> Dick Tracy. But I went to the start of it all. I went to the place where her body was dumped. 
Her body was dumped at 2 o'clock in the morning. It was 41 degrees outside. Two hours later at 4 a.m., the parents call the grandmother and say, hey, little baby blah, blah, blah is in your front yard. Go check on her. Two hours after dumping her body. She was alive. She survived. And she's doing, from what I understand, she's doing good today. This was years ago. So, but she was not doing good that day. And two hours in a front yard bleeding from her, from pretty much every hole God gave her. Bleeding from every hole Jesus God Christ, gave her. Dude. And so I go out there and I start at the beginning and I start questioning. Nate. I went old school. No computers, no fucking cell, nothing, dude. I went fucking old school. I started knocking and talking and I had pictures and see there is a code. Criminals do have a code. And it's, you don't fuck with children. You don't hurt kids. I mean, you could be the worst of the worst fucking criminal, but you don't fucking hurt kids. So I use that to my advantage. And I took a picture of the parents and I went to some of the worst fucking neighborhoods in San Antonio, knocking on fucking doors that I knew that this couple, yeah, the parents of this little girl were associated with. And I'm showing their pictures and I'm like, these people... We don't know if they killed their kid or not, but their kid is not good and she may not survive. Do you know who this motherfucker is? And they're like, yeah. At first they were like, fuck you, get get the fuck out of here, pig. When I told them that they almost, that we think they killed the kid, because we did, we thought they, the little girl was going to die. Yeah. They were like, what? Yeah, we know who she is. She's over here. She's right. over they'll, here. They'll rat in those, Boom. yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, right away. So... I went over there and we caught her ass. Dude. We I, we caught I caught her. So I ended up coming into work at 6 a.m. and I was at work until till midnight because I wanted to see her. I wanted to see the mother get booked, questioned, and admit to the offense. And she did. Good. They, she admitted to the offense. So that was one of the that was one of the shittiest days of my life. It was good finding her. It was better finding out that the child would live and would right. be placed in a, you know, a better a, home, obviously. Better home, yeah. Yeah. And away from these people and that these people would spend the rest of their natural born lives in prison for what they did, you know? So that was good. Damn dude. So, but yeah, I mean, there's a lot of, you know, bad days. And then, um, my ex wife always tells me too, that I am a, uh, like you, Cat, cat with nine lives, but I've exceeded my. You, you know <laughs> yeah. I mean? Oh yeah, dude. I, I think you I, were getting started, like I'm, dropping your nine lives in fucking high yeah, school, dude. dude. I'm, I'm, yeah, my nine, <laughs> my, my nine lives over, were over in high school, bro. Dude, we had some crazy nights back then, dude. Oh like, God, I mean, yeah, nothing yeah. obviously compared to what you just recounted but yeah. like yeah like we had a we had a pretty like crazy we had an uh, upbringing an, yeah it, we had some good times bro some remember really remember that night we were out here and uh oh, God. and and those dudes drove by what did they they yelled something or they swerved near our car or something like that and we like i don't know i don't know if it was you or my brother but you guys went into attack mode and we were like the younger click, me and Ted and yeah, Al. Yeah, so we're yeah. like, let's just go. And we went after this guy. Thank God nothing happened. Yeah. We could have gotten yeah. ourselves shot or some yeah. shit. Yeah. Because back then the, the, the gangs were, everybody was carrying guns back then. Right. Yeah. The you crime know, was, the, the crime gang, was up. Yeah. Remember gangs were bad back in the nineties, dude, like the late nineties. Yeah, I mean, it's dude. like there was a gang explosion here, dude. I mean, it was nuts. Yeah, it's pretty nuts. But man. we always stuck to ourselves, and we did our. I mean, we did our own shit, bro. You know that. Yeah, right? yeah, we weren't part of that. Yeah. No. But um, we, but we didn't take shit from anybody either, though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, we didn't. We were kind of like uh, cool nerds in a in a sense. Yeah. Yeah. Cool nerd, yeah. <laughs> um. So, I want to like eventually. I want to talk like, dude. I mean. We, that was just law enforcement, and we're at what forty minutes, dude. And that, that was, yeah. dude. I knew we were gonna have a problem. Um, so let's talk about how that ties into law enforcement. I mean, how law enforcement ties into politics, right? Because that's something that I know. Uh, one, it's in the news a lot right now. Uh, Lately, I've identified much more as like a moderate. We were talking before we got started and you know that I ran for office. I ran for a third party. It was the Green Party, essentially. And uh, 
you know, I never would have won that election, obviously, right? But it would it would have been funny because I would have been a justice of the peace. I, 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 right? I thought I was like, I was like, this. I, I, honestly, <laughs> that 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 time, I was like, I was like, damn, is this dude gonna fucking make it? Like, is he, is it really gonna? You know how many this? votes I got in that election? Like five thousand or something like that. It I was still, it was only three percent, but it was a lot. No, but you got a lot of vote, dude. Yeah. You got a lot of vote. Like, I know, I was dude. Like, holy shit! Like, he might actually pull this fucking thing off. But then, like. Once the night when I was like, oh, well, I God. met with Robbie yeah, and, uh, and we had a conversation and I mean, it was, it was, it was, it was cool. It was interesting. I was flattered to have been called in. Like he asked to meet and I was like, all right. And he asked yeah. me, he asked me, he's like, you know, you're going to take this point, this one point, this raise is going to come down to one percentage point. You're going to take it from me. And I really considered dropping out at that point, but you know, like, I think I was, in a like a really immature state of mind at that point no, and, and especially I, the last I, I two that. three elections I, I, I doubt that bro i don't know i mean but I, but the last my point is the last two three elections like i've seen like the gridlock in washington and it's made me think about politics in general and so i identify as a centrist there's but but part of i think part of being a centrist is that you gotta kind of go by the issues right and one of the issues but let me that ask you I this. so you're so you're a centrist who goes by the issues, but do you actually believe? I mean, what I mean, do you believe the issues to be true? Like, do you believe that the, the issues thing is? Are I real? talked do about this a couple of episodes ago, right? Do you believe and issues are real. In some instances, yes. For example, you know, like a lot of the time, the issues are between one. It's like a yes or no. You know what I mean? So that's why we end up with polarized politics, not two, three, five, ten 10 parties, 10 sides, but we end up with people who tend to vote this way and people who tend to vote that. Not everybody's voting on the issues, but my point is it's a, it's a dichotomy. It's a binary decision. And so, so I'd rather look at shit like that. You know what I mean? One of the things that I, I look at is guns, right? One of the things that I'm conservative on or on the right-hand side of things is guns. I think everybody, every law-abiding citizen should be able to, there's water right there if you need some. Uh, every law-abiding citizen should be able to, to, uh, to buy a gun, right? And to have a gun. One, because you should be allowed, you should be, you should be entitled to protect your family or whatever the case may be. But two, it's in our constitution, which is the highest law of the land, <laughs> yeah. right? And in the constitution, it states very clearly, and you know, in the language of those times, but very clearly that uh, American citizens are, are to be armed because we need to protect in case of a, of a tyrannical government yes. taking over, right? <laughs> so that's the number one reason, right? So that's just one of the things, but my just to put a period here my 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 view on guns kind of ties into my view on law enforcement right and that's a that's an opinion that's obviously evolved over time but with with you like i'm sure you have like stronger views or like per, some pretty strong views not stronger but strong views with respect to you know law enforcement as it's represented <clears throat> in the constitution and i don't know i think i was wondering if we could talk about that so <clears throat> my thing is is that um i tend to lean conservative i'm not right. gonna hide it yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm not gonna i'm not ashamed of it um i lean conservative but you wouldn't have to be ashamed of it if we were living outside of a, a major city yeah, basically right, right? Yeah. yeah and so, that's the reality of politics and so i i lean conservative but um a lot of things have come out <clears throat> lately and I personally think, I personally, I, I mean, 100%, I believe that I'm more of a, um, I'm a constitutionalist through and through, dude. Yeah. I, I believe more in the constitution than I do anything else. And you have people talk about this bullshit that, oh, you're following some some document that's, you know, you know over 200 years old, whatever. And I'm nah. like, no, like... Yeah, I, I it's believe, the highest law of the land. Yeah, I yeah. believe in the Constitution, and yeah. I mean, I, um, and Lucy, well, there's a re th those guys were super fucking smart, you know, and they just came from England. I mean, tell me, it's not funny how that. Tell me, it's not funny that they were able to discern 
future issues that America would come under. Right. They were and political scholars. Dude, yeah. they took care of it back then. Right. And so I believe in the Constitution. And I don't give a shit if people believe me or not. But I'll tell you right now, if I'm asked to um, violate somebody's constitutional rights by some freaking crazy governor or, or whatever. Not, right. I'm not yeah. saying we have a, I'm not calling my, our governor crazy. No, just, but, but yeah, I get let's you. Let's just say somebody gets in office and they so, want Somebody asks you to violate the Constitution, <laughs> yeah. some authority figure you didn't, uh, yeah. I'm done. Yeah. I'm done. I mean, I am not going have to. Have you encountered like, uh, I'll, for lack of, I don't know what you would call it, libertarian activists who intentionally like aggress law enforcement officers yeah. in order to like, I don't know, uh, practice their, their right or anything yeah, like, like that. Like they're, like they're, like they they're walking them. down the street with a AR on the their back. Or, yeah. Audits. Right. Yeah. Those people. Yeah. I mean, I've dealt with them and, uh, but most of the videos I've seen on that, like cops handle it pretty well. They do. And then they try to make the cop look like he's a liar, uh, they, they, you know, and let me, so, get these people that want to prove a point and I get it. And, 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 and I'm, and I'm going to, I'm going to liken that to something else in a minute, but you have these people who want to do these second amendment audits or what, what I don't know what these idiots, second amendment, first amendment audits, whatever. <laughs> yeah. And they'll carry an AR down the street and just to have a cop stop them so that they could fuck with the cop. Right. right. Yeah. They want to fuck with the cops, so they do this. Which doesn't make it illegal, but it's kind of fucked up. It doesn't yeah. take so a genius to figure illegal. that out. Yeah. But there is a crime, though. There is a crime called disorderly conduct causing panic or threat, or causing panic, um, or causing alarm, causing alarm or panic. That's a that's an actual penal code. They can look it up. Yeah. So, what people need to understand is. If I'm driving down the street and I get no calls and I'm on preventative patrol, which I touched on right, earlier, right, earlier. Uh -huh. if I'm doing preventative patrol and I see a black guy, Mexican, white guy walking down the street, three o'clock in the morning, I can talk to, I can stop and talk to him, but if he tells me fuck off, then I gotta leave. But if I get a call from, from dispatch, dispatch and yeah. dispatch says, hey, we got a call individual wearing this this and this grandma out. jones freaking out yeah then i have a complainant so i can go make contact with that person and i have to id that person mm -hmm. because i have a complainant if i have a complainant i can id that person i am not violating his fourth amendment rights so me driving down the street and just stopping some guy because it's three o'clock in the morning and trying to get his ID, if he gives it to me, great. If he doesn't and tells me, go fuck yourself, then I have to go fuck myself. <laughs> I, I, I have to leave, you know, but. After your shift, obviously. After my shift, yeah. <laughs> But if I have a call for service and I have a complainant and they're telling me, you know, this, this, and this, I have every right to stop him because I have a complainant telling me like, hey, this guy, whatever, like, I think this guy's like casing cars, casing house, whatever. So I can go identify him and I have a right to, cause I have a complainant. People don't, people don't see it. Like people don't realize that they think like, oh, he's messing with me. But these guys that do these audits, I mean, they don't understand. People were calling in cause they're like, Hey, there's this guy walking down the street with an AR strapped to his back. And <clears throat> I, I God, I shouldn't have said AR because, I mean, people see AR and they're like, "Ooh, scary combat weapon." It's not a combat weapon. I mean, in combat, we, we're using full auto trip three. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. These aren't the, combat right. weapons. These are there. There's deer rifles that are deadlier than some of the ARs on the streets. Right. Yeah. You know. But anyhow, <clears throat> um, you got these guys doing these audits. Now, you want to do an audit? Cool. I mean, you, you want me, you want my attention, you got it. All right. You wanted my attention. Now you got it. So why do you want to say, fuck you pig? Hey motherfucker, what are you going to do? Yeah. What, why the name calling? Like, wh I don't understand. Ag why. Again, it's not illegal, but you it, know, it's it, kind of stupid, illegal. right? It's not illegal, yeah. but why? Like, right. I mean, it's stupid. Yeah. Like, I mean, okay. So you hate me because I'm a cop. Good. Hate me. I don't care. You want to hate me? Hate me. Because you know what? I don't need your love anyway. But 
don't do everything in your fucking power to get my attention and then you get my attention and then you're like hey you fucking pig what are you right. gonna do you fucking pussy you know like like dude you wanted me to come over here and now you're calling me a fucking fa- you know right like whatever. they like a, a lot of people will a lot of those types of people will engage you in in, in a way to like to to provoke you they provoke yeah, you and, and, and then is. then they could they they provocation they, it's right. a, that's all it is a provocation and then they complain that you're not yes. like kind and then, and or then, what? They want, then they want to start spewing like oh a tort texas penal code whatever well, it'd be another thing if like you were just harassing random people yeah, in other so, words so and so with that being said, flag burning. So uh, I'll, I'll go on the opposite end of the spectrum and go to flag burning. Uh-huh. So flag burning, oh my God, dude, because you and I both served in the military. Right. Flag burning is like... I was in the honor guard, so yeah, like we dude, had to study flag, like flag regulations. Flag pisses me off. But you know that my, you knew my dad. You grew up with my dad. He's no longer here, but my dad said it best, dude. And he made me changed my whole perception of people who burn flags. And I and I used to be like, I would see people burning flags and I'd be like, man, these motherfuckers dead. I was like, I wish I could, I wish I could get him. Like, I wish I could find him. And he's like, why? For what? He goes, you served so they could do that. I served so they could do that. He goes, that's their right. He goes, why do you want to go beat them up? Because they're, because they're exercising their right that you don't like. He goes, do you do shit they don't like? He goes, do they say I want to beat you up? And I'm like, yeah, pro- pro- well, now they do. Yeah. But back, now they <laughs> back do. Then, but back yeah, it then, was... it wasn't. But I mean, you know, so he. It's weird think- that you bring that up, man. It's like it's uh, <coughs> like the civility in politics. Yeah. You remember how politicians were when we were growing up? Like they didn't do half the shit that they do like backstabbing and stuff like that. No, they, dude, you know, no. they worked with each other. They might have like completely disagreed on every single issue, but occasionally they'd come together, they'd have a drink, they'd shake hands and they'd find some kind of like, you know. Oh, it's like it's like testifying in court, right? So um not going to toot my own horn because I don't know who's watching this. Who's or who will, watch, yeah. Who will watch this, but I've had attorneys come up to me after I – after I uh, testify in court, and they're like, "Damn, you, you test. I love the way you testify. You're great. You're you're good on the stand. You know, I, I you know, you're, you're you you're are good. a good orator. Yeah. yeah. And so, um, <clears throat> I've had defense attorneys come up to me after a case and tell me, you, "You're good. You're good." And they shake my hands, and, but it wasn't always like that. My first time in court. The defense attorney ate my fucking lunch, dude. I mean, he fucking ripped me apart, made me look like the biggest piece of shit that ever wore a badge. And I was just like, da, 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 da. You know, I've like, seen those videos on YouTube too. Dude, and it's he, like, damn, this guy. He had, he ate my lunch, but saw him in a bar a week later. And he's like, hey, he comes up to me and he's like, hey, you're good. He goes, you're a good cop. He's like, you have to realize the fucking game. He goes, it's me. He goes in the courtroom. He goes, it's me against you. He goes, I have to do everything in my power to make, to, uh, to, uh, discredit you. He goes, it's your job to counter everything I tell you and beat me at my own game. Do you think that helped you later? Yes. Right. Yeah. Yes, I think that's where you're going. When, yeah. when I looked at, when I looked at it from his point of view and I was like, Holy shit. Like, yeah, you know, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's chess. It's a chess game. Chess. Yeah. You know, he's hitting me with different, he's hitting me with different, you know, like he's hitting me here, hit me there. And I'm like, Holy shit, where do I put my pawn? Like where, where my rook go? You know, that's crazy. And, and that like, gets to like the idea of like, poly, like, like, you know, I think, I think there's a certain naivety with like certain talking heads you know what i mean when they automatically go to oh well this is wrong and that's wrong it's like yeah but like the world works the way it does and you know until you're gonna hold a referendum or get two-thirds of congress to vote on something you just have to deal with it you know what i mean and 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 you can choose to to be the kid on the playground that's like you know, whining, or you can choose to fight back. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I made sure that 
from that point on, I made sure that when I went into court, I had all my ducks in a row. Uh-huh. I mean, I thought I had my ducks in a row the first time. I mean, I really did. I was like, shit, I'm good. I'm ready. Nope, I wasn't. I was young. I was dumb. And all I, I mean, I was just a grunt on the streets, man. I was ready, you know, like they say about every young cop, you know, pissing. Uh, what do they say? Piss and fire and vinegar, whatever. You Pit, know, right? Yeah, yeah. Piss and vinegar. Yeah, I don't know like, about the fire. Go yeah. out there and just like save the world, right? And of course, you know, there's a movie that talks about. Uh, there's a movie that actually talk. It's a, it's actually an award winning movie that talks about being a cop on the streets mm-hmm. and thinking like, if you really think you're gonna go out there and save everybody, you're that's vanity, and it's true. It's vanity, and there's a lot of young cops that suffer with vanity because they think they're going to go out there and they're going to change everything. But I'll tell you what, dude, I'm getting older, bro. My body's more broke and the criminals are staying the same age, you know, because the one, all the ones I put away, they're gone. And now you got a new breed. If you had to talk to like a major decision maker, right? Like if you were standing before the guy in Congress that's responsible for, you know, certain funds that'll end up in the, you know, in police, you know, in police, mental health, you know, hospitals, everything. What, what do you think would help if it's not, you know, additional funding for police departments? Like, is it mental health? Is it? You know what? I don't give a fuck if they fund, defund, fund the police. I I wasn't going to go there. No, 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 no. But what they need to do is they need to work on education because education lack of education breeds violence and crime Mm -hmm. i know that i see it i mean you got but you know it's almost like don't you think it's almost like going um like a like when a video goes viral it's kind of a fluke right sometimes on one day a kid shows up to class and that one teacher delivers that one lecture that changes that kid's life forever right but it's like the viral video it's like a fluke you know what i mean there's a lot of cool ass videos on the internet that nobody knows about you know what i mean they could have gone viral if somebody made a joke or something happened like i don't know like uh, i i mean i definitely agree that education needs to needs to improve but i mean is that really is that is that you think that's the number one issue that's yes yeah wholeheartedly because i mean what i've seen on the streets the last the last over, almost two decades, it's lack of education. Hmm. I mean, and... But in what way? Like, I mean, is it like better schools for the kids, like, in, so in why, challenged why, neighborhoods? Why is, it, why is it that schools in a particular part of town get certain types of funding and education? Property for, taxes. For, for cert, yeah, for certain projects or certain programs, but you'll have schools in other neighborhoods that don't get the same funding... And it's like, and again, I don't want to, I'm not, I'm not going to uh, shoot down the teachers here in those other school districts, but they can only do so much. And it seems like they're limited as to what they can do. And a lot of those teachers spend out of their own pockets for, for um, extra um, school supplies. School supplies, yeah, yeah. For the kids. And if you look at the, um, you know that the, uh, there's a printout that gets sent out um, by every school district in our in our city, mm-hmm. and it tells you where the highest number of like, like these schools have the best numbers for math, science, yeah, whatever. Mm-hmm. And yeah, like ratings. Why are they always lower in the lower income neighborhood? Yeah. Why? Why? And if we started funneling more money into those school districts and that money was appropriated correctly into the correct programs, into the correct curriculums, and those kids got to have an education that was on par with with school districts in other neighborhoods, I believe that the crime rate would go, I 100% believe. It wouldn't fix everything. We should say it that. Would, yeah, it wouldn't fix everything. But, but it would improve it. Yeah. It would improve a lot. Uh, because you know that there's going to be people that say, <laughs> oh, well, you know, it needs to be completely equal. And, you know, even but that, there, yeah, there, it, so, you're, so never much, gonna, you're never going to get there. There's so much inequality. And you know what? It's anyway. Not, and it's not in our, and it's not with the police. We're not. Right. You know, I mean, we're. Yeah, we're getting into the weeds now. Yeah. yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? 
they want to blame us. They want to blame us for everything, and it, and and it's not us. I mean, it starts like, I mean, shit. Discipline your kids. Sometimes we get calls. No shit, we'll get calls from to, the kid. No, from a parent to discipline their kids, and we'll go and I'll tell them, why don't you beat your kid, or not beat? Uh, him, but why don't <laughs> that's you, what you're thinking. Yeah. yeah like, why don't you spank your kid? Why are you calling me? To, I'm not. That's not my kid. I'm not going to raise your kid. You spank him. Go ahead. I get like they're like, well, I don't want to go to jail. You are not going to go to jail for spanking your kid. Yeah. Because he doesn't need this or that. He needs an ass whooping, <laughs> and you need to give it to him now because he ain't going to learn. Right. And it's not my job. It's to funny do you it. mentioned that. Like in psych class, like our our psych one hundred and one teacher had told us that uh, that th- that punishment works. Hell yeah, it does. But it has to be severe. Like in, you know, it has to hurt in some way. And then when you're done with the punishment, whatever it was, you whether it's a spanking. Why, right? No, no. He said, he said, well, <laughs> he didn't say explain or don't explain. He said, don't apologize. Oh, Cause right. some parents will, or some people, you know, in some of those yes. instances, they'll get a spanking and then like the parent will feel bad or one parent will spank and the other parent will come in Good and be God, like, Oh, God. I'm sorry. God. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, dude. Well, that's that's no, yeah. And, that's and I'll tell point. you, when when I was when I was when I was in San, when I was patrolling this area around here, what I noticed was that because um, we always got to get certain information when we book somebody in jail, right? Mm-hmm. And and part of the information is your next of kin. Mm-hmm. So I'm booking somebody, and I'm like, all right, who do we contact in case of emergency, bro? Eight times out of ten, it was my grandma. My grandma. Call my grandma. Give me her name, address, phone number. Where's dad? Where's mom? Yeah, where's yeah, mom? Where's, where's dad? dad? Oh, yeah. Dad's in jail or dad's dead. Where's mom? I don't know where my mom is. My grandma's raising me. Bro, that's eight, seven, eight times out of ten kids, these people, and I say kids because they're like 21, 22, whatever. Yeah. They're living with their grandmothers. The grandmothers are eating nana. Yeah. You know, Mima, whatever. Grandma's raising the kid. You know, and <clears throat> there is a I I believe there is a breakdown of and I'm you took psych, right? Mm-hmm. Did they ever talk about a father, a father, a manly father and I'm not being a misogynist. No, no, no. I know where you're going. I'm just saying yeah. did they ever talk about a a father fatherly influence on a child's life did they ever bring that up did they ever talk about that i can't remember i can't remember um they talked about like like i took 102 which was like family or or family and like growth and development because there is scientific studies which i'm sure you know about because you're a smart dude but dude you and i have talked about this before and you know that uh one of the conservatives that i i appreciate very much is ben shapiro Right. Oh, yeah. And he talks about this stuff all the time. He talks about like the value of a family union. Right. And like to have a masculine and a feminine influence <laughs> and to have there be balance between those two. And I, I dude, I didn't I, I particularly I like I didn't have a father like a, a father at home. I didn't have my stepdad until like 10 years old. I didn't have Victor until I was like 10. But I totally like I've lived in both worlds. And I can tell you that there's more structure with the father around. Yeah. Right. And and there's value there. I believe that there's value there. Um, you so know. You're an example of it. Yeah, I because guess so. Well, it, I, I, like, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I think you are because, and I don't. Um, I'm not going, and I'm not. I'm not going to judge, but I see where you're at now. What versus you have, what, what? What you have now. Versus where you could have been had you not had a father figure. Well, you know, before we were here, we're on the south side. We're yeah. we're yeah. on Brighton Street between yeah. Nogalitos and Thirty Five, right? Yeah. So it was like it was yeah, it was crazy, man. Yeah, and and growing up like in that neighborhood, you know, it's just it do, it do, it does something to you, but you don't really realize it when, while you're there. No, you know what I mean. You're yeah. just like gang banging. You have your friends, and you're just fucking trying to survive every day at school. Yes, yeah. right, yeah. <laughs> Try not to get jumped or beat up. Or right, whatever. yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, and I used to. It's funny you say that. I used to think it was because I was the only white kid in school, right? I but, remember you saying that when you when you came over when I met you. But it's not. Everybody yeah. was like looking out after their back. It's Even though your nuts. last name was Benavides, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, that's a, uh, yeah, that's for yeah. another day, but yeah, 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 dude. Um, so, I think we 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 beaten law enforcement uh, like a dead horse. You're also uh, making your foray into like uh, being an Instagram content creator for a specific genre, right? right. You you want to talk what what genre is that? So, so <clears throat> talk about first of all, talk about what ed because it's edc yeah, what yeah. talk about edc like and what it is for somebody who doesn't know anything about what edc stands for start there yeah so yeah, it's kind of dude it's so my daughter my daughters give me all kinds of shit about it. they make they, they laugh about it like oh edc dad you know they everything's <laughs> a joke to them right? pull that mic up a little bit closer to you so what's that oh the, the mic so yeah. like my daughters like they make fun of like like oh EDC dad oh you EDC dad you know yeah. everything's like like it's a joke to them which but stands for everyday carry everyday carry yeah every person every adult even hell shit my kids they has have, EDC they have yeah. an EDC right which and is the shit you carry with you shit you carry every day every day so uh -huh. um but what's different from like the EDC culture versus somebody that puts their wallet, their keys, so, okay, you know, so, and that's it, and their phone. And, and th so here, here, here's the funny thing is that um, uh, we had an so ten years ago, my oh shit, twenty shit, I had an EDC in the Marine Corps. It was a knife. It was a it was a knife. It was a pen. It was I mean shit, the Marine Corps. You need you you better have pen and paper on you. If right, you, you have you, equipment you, with you yeah, every if you day. Didn't, it was yeah. your ass because we needed to write down our missions, our operations. We needed to write down uh, fire fire for effect, like everything. We needed to write down missions. So our ADC was pen, paper, pocket knife, uh, leather mint, whatever. From, this uh, is like a because EDC is like a survivalist, not survivalist. Well, it stems but from a survivalist mindset, mi militant, but, you know, preparedness. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's it stems from a preparedness mindset, but it's completely evolved into this community where, and I'll tell you right now, dude, the the social media EDC culture is like nothing I've ever seen, because you tell me this. In what way? You answer me this. I met a guy a year and a half ago. We traded knives. He hit. He he saw one of my posts, and he said, "Hey, would you be interested in trading this knife for that knife?" And I was like, ah, "Fuck yeah, yeah, let's do it." You know, whatever. He's like, "All right." And this was my first dealing on Instagram. So I got a complete stranger hitting up my DMs wanting to trade. So I was like, "Well, shit!" And like, what if he rips me off? You know, like shit. I'm gonna ship him a two hundred dollar knife that, and he's gonna ship me a two hundred dollar knife. But what if he doesn't ship it? Right. You know? Yeah. So the trade went smooth. Today, year and a half later, this guy is one of my best friends in the world. Um, I will ship a five hundred dollar knife to his house to save taxes, to save money on taxes and shipping. And it's I'm talking like forty fifty dollars shipping and taxes. I will ship a forty fifty dollar knife to this guy's house who I've never met in person, just on Instagram, and trust him enough to ship this five hundred dollar knife to my house just so I could save fifty bucks. You tell me what other community that happens in. Yeah, that I mean that's unheard of, and and it happens. It happens every day. And he's one of my closest friends, you know, and um, I don't know if he'd want me to. I, I wish I could say his name. I don't know if he'd want me to, um, but, his, uh, well, I'll just say his first name is Dave. Mm -hmm. And he's one of my best friend, one of my better friends on, uh, on, in the EDC community, in the EDC world, on Instagram. But where else do you find that shit like that? You're right. not gonna, you don't find, you don't see shit like that anywhere. And um, so there's yeah. like a like a degree of honesty within the EDC oh, big community, time, dude. Big time. Right and now, EDC right. is primarily like this community primarily exists where? So it, uh, it's an Instagram, Facebook. Um, so uh -huh. what happened was is uh, with me ten years ago. So the Marine Corps, I had an EDC. We never called it that. Right. Ten years ago, yeah. I had an EDC. We called it that, and it was my off-duty carry. 
This is my off-duty everyday carry. Mm -hmm. And it consisted of a pistol, an extra magazine, a knife, a pen, a flashlight, my watch, phone, car keys. That was my EDC. Mm -hmm. Today, um, so I went to, yeah, there's my, yeah, there's my answer. So today, <clears throat> um, or I'm sorry, a year, a year and a half ago, um, I do, you, well, you know, I teach self-defense, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I teach self-defense. So, and, and I want to talk about that in a little bit. So I teach, I, I teach, I teach self-defense. I do self-defense presentation seminars, whatever. And a lot of these people don't carry handguns. So I had to develop a fighting style with things that, with things that I knew how to come to fight off threats with. So I was like, okay, you know what? What do real estate agents carry a lot? Pens, right? Mm -hmm. So I developed a type of fighting style, if you will, using a pen to defend themselves. The pen is truly mightier than the, the sword. The pen is mightier than the sword, bro. <laughs> so I, I spent the better part of a day researching like the best tactical pens, the best, um, the best tactical pens, best, best self-defense pens. And that led me to coming across a channel on YouTube solely dedicated to EDC. And I watched one episode of this guy. And from there, I was like blown away. I was shocked. And I will say this, I don't like the guy today anymore. I don't watch his shit. I don't like him. I don't have any respect for him. But he did get me involved in the EDC community. So I got to give him that respect. Yeah, but I don't. I don't respect the dude anymore because it seems like anybody that gets too much fame, they kind of like get an ego. They get an ego. Yeah, and, and you could. I I kind of see it, and I don't want to speak <clears throat> ill of him, and I, I guess I I already did, but I'll just stop. But right is there. but yeah, I mean, I think that kind of thing. I was talking to Bob. You remember Bob yeah. from when we grew up? He was my first guest. And he was talking about that in the tattoo world. So I think like, you know, whenever somebody reaches a certain level, you know, if they're not primed to resist that thought process. Yeah, and so I, I think this guy just blew up and he forgot. I, in my opinion, well, it's not my opinion. It's stuff that I hear from other, I'm talking about makers, like big makers in the community that are responsible for like some of the gear that I own and mm -hmm. that I bought. Some of these content creators are like, I can't, some of these makers that make the gear that I carry, they've said he's turned their back on them. And now he's all that this individual is all about this. So anyway, get off this guy. It was him that got it was him and his videos that got me into pry bars and pans and flashlights and like all this shit that I never in a million years thought that I would have given two shits about. Right. I mean, and, I mean, and we're looking at some of that here on the screen, yeah. right? So I've carried the Leatherman since the Marine Corps. I've carried a knife since, I mean, shit, you remember the knives I had in high school, We right? we, we carried Leathermans in the Air Force, yeah. yeah. But you remember in high school, dude, I had a knife on me every fucking day, right? Right, yeah. So now my knife game has completely fucking like... These makers, do they, do like, they send it to you, or is it like the story you told me earlier where it's like somebody else who's making a trade, or is it both? It, it's it's a little bit of both sometimes uh -huh. i'll get a gift sometimes i get sometimes they'll send it to me to try it out sometimes uh i buy it sometimes i get a discount um sometimes i just like um uh, it's a it's a it's a an exclusive quote right. quote unquote exclusive and you buy it and whatever so but everybody's working with everybody everybody's much. working with everybody. Yeah. but you have to understand my my thing was I am. I was a gun guy. My my entire life revolved around firearms, and ammunition, and the best guns, and the best firearms, and the best um, ammo, and it completely like devolved into something else, and it completely devolved into like this. Like I got into knives after that, mm -hmm. and to be a gun so. Two years ago, two years ago, two years ago, okay? Uh -huh. I would have said, if you spend $200 or more on a knife, you were a fucking idiot. You're fucking stupid. And today, I think I may, maybe I have 
out of my entire knife collection, I probably have, I don't, I mean, I don't want to give an exact number because I mean, it's just kind of personal, but I have a, I have an extensive amount of knives. Uh huh. I have a pretty good collection. But and, the reason that it's maybe, $200 maybe is five of them are less than 200. And oh, wow. the other crazy amount that I have are over or 250 or over. But the reason that, it, and I talked to you about this a couple of weeks ago, uh, the reason that some of them get so expensive is because of the quality of the steel, the right? Qual- the maker, the materials, the blade steels, the, um, the action, flipper action, flipper style, thumb studs, all kinds of things take into. And it's yeah. not necessarily true that, that a harder steel makes a better knife, right? Okay, so no, it's not true. Because, because you talked about the flexibility, the quality, and the sometimes when you have a so flexible. You talk about edge retention. You talk about you got edge retention. You have uh, you have edge retention. Okay, so I'm a gun guy, right? Uh huh. And I can I can you can give me. I don't I don't know what kind of firearm you have, but I promise you, if you brought me your firearm down here right now, I could take it apart. No matter what it is, I could take it apart, clean it, strip it, do all this, tell you. And I and if there was anything wrong with it, I could fix it, because that is my knowledge of firearms. Mm-hmm. Now, I took my knowledge of firearms and introduced that into uh, cutlery knives, and so I didn't just start buying knives all willy nilly and be like, okay, I'm gonna pay you know pay five hundred dollars for a knife. No, I started researching like the materials, what goes on, what what happens to make this knife. Why is this knife this much? What makes this knife built like a tank? What makes this knife this? What makes this knife that? Uh-huh. Why is this knife three hundred dollars and not one fifty? Why is this knife five hundred and not two hundred? You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I started reading, and there's a lot, dude. There's a lot of things that goes into a lot of things that go into knives, like edge retention, um, uh, edge retention, um, density. And, de- no, a, a big part of it is the heat treat. Uh-huh. So, uh, now people that hear this, like on my channel, like people that follow me, if they hear this, they'll be like, Oh, what the fuck does he know? And I'm still, <laughs> like, I'm still learning, but I I'll do- send you uh clips from this, by the way, so that okay. you can repost. But I do know that he treat does play a part because I am very good friends with an active knife maker in the community. And I ask him quite, I, He's probably tired of me asking him questions because I ask him questions all the time. I'm like, Randy, does he treat have a does he treat play a part in the knife? And he'll tell like he gives me he he'll break it down. And he's a scientist, by the way. But he's, like he's like he he treating it is gonna make it like what less less he treat likely can make it to hard or it uh, can make it brittle. So. Knife how is that po- like how can like is does, you, depends oh, on the temperature heat the knife uh-huh. it's going to become brittle if you if you heat treat it just right you wouldn't think that that would be the case with metal why is that because you're burning yeah. it you're you, you overcooked it but like so it, you made it brittle that, you overcooked it you huh. burn the shit out of it and now it's brittle but there are some knife companies that overheat the shit out of their knives and then they sell them they'll still put an edge on them then they'll sharpen them and they'll sell them and then you use it once and you break the and you break the knife. Or and it's you know just why? really dull after that. Yeah, it's yeah. done. It's dead. It's a dead knife. Yeah. And why? Because they heated the shit up. They baked it too hard. They baked it too too long and too too long and uh too hard. Yeah. And made and or they too made, high. They yeah. made that too high, yeah, too high. They made it brittle. And Randy, so a lot of knife makers, they will test the rock it's called the Rockwell hardness. Uh-huh. And they test the rock. That's what I was going to ask. I was trying to remember what you said. Yeah, like, they test yeah. the rock will hardness of their blades by actually they have this machine that like it like um, it doesn't puncture the blade, but it, uh, it 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 um it's like a stud that like pushes down on the steel and it measures the hardness of the steel. And it tells you you're at 61 RH, 60 RH. And what I've found and what i've read and what i've learned is that anywhere between 50 60 to 61 is the optimal like heat treat that's the optimal rockwell hardness that you want uh-huh. 59 60 61 
It's like the most versatile yeah, or that, whatever. That's yeah, that's like that's like the best. And is that a switchblade? Which, which one? Yeah, yeah, that's a switchblade. As am I carrying that? I'm carrying that one right now. Oh no, I'm not. Oh, that, that'd right be now. crazy because I already went through like freaking 200 pictures. Yeah. <laughs> so I thought that was no, I thought I was carrying it, but I'm not. But yeah, that's that's, that's pretty badass. I I don't think I've ever like apart from the one you buy at the bodega when you're yeah, a yeah, kid. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen an actual switchblade in real life. Yeah, that that's an I. I, that's a that's that's a that's a microtech and that you can see the blade steel on there says m390 uh-huh so m390 is supposed to be like a super steel quote unquote super steel ikaro steel to put yeah, it in that, that is like that is like that is like the that is like the steel of champions right the steel yeah. of kings like that huh. steel is like it looks badass I, I love that knife bro i really do so and then you see okay so go back up uh huh. So you see this uh, the knife with the double. Uh, there's there's a picture with two knives on top. That one right there. Yeah. Okay. So that's a Chris Reeves Sabenza. That guy, the the top knife, uh -huh. not the bottom one. The top knife with the. They satin, both look sick. Yeah, the top knife with the satin blade. So I watched, I watched his videos repeatedly on how he makes his knives, mm -hmm. and his knives are made to tighter tolerances. Than are what the the than what NASA uses to make their space, space really plan. yes, and he actually had he employed a person who worked for NASA, and he told him to figure that out. No, no, he told him he's like, do you realize that your tolerances are tight or are closer than what NASA requires for their spatials that go into space? And he's like, yeah. So and what? That's why my name my that knife is five fifty. That's a five. That's a, almost six hundred dollar knife. Damn. And every and people say ah fuck it. It's all hype. It's bullshit. You don't need to pay. I'll tell you what. Those knives. Those are going to be heirloom knives because I can have them sharp resharpened by the company, and they'll be passed on to my kids, and my kids can use them, because the way they're made, bro. I could okay. So you see the R on the on the on the handle. They call it the scale. Uh, this right here? No, go up, go on to the next knife. Okay, uh -huh. go come down towards the blade right there. Yeah, the yeah. R. Uh huh. Okay, so that's a pivot screw right there under the R. That's a pivot screw. So if I were to take that pivot screw out of that knife, that knife would still have zero blade play, which means like this: zero. This is blade play. Mm -hmm. So right here, that knife will not move back and forth. It will not move back and forth. Can we like see this, it like this. That knife right here. That's a pivot screw. If you take that pivot screw out of that knife, this it, this blade will not move up and down. Hold that up to the camera so that we can see it up there. Which like what the, the hold it? Yeah, yeah. Hold the pivot screw right there, and like you'll be able to see. This is the pivot screw, right? Yeah, yeah that. Right there. Uh huh. The so what? So 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 what's what's that for? Or what? That, we, that, we take it out. That keeps the knife in place. So on this knife here, uh huh. If you were to take, if you were to take that that part on this knife right, this right out, here on that knife there, mm -hmm. that knife would not move back and forth. There's no. It will not. It will not move back and forth because oh, okay. it's built to such tight tolerances that it will not move. And the steel on that knife, you would think that it would be that M390 super steel that I told you about. Uh, uh -huh. It's only S35BN. Which and is? It's, it's, a, it's a good steel, but it's not the best. Oh, uh, okay. But, it's, it's a ma but you know what it is? It's a manageable steel, which uh, means okay. I can take a sharpening stone from your kitchen, I can, or a sharpening. It's system. versatile. It's yeah. not like a high end yeah, kind of so just do this. From your kitchen, I could take a sharpening stone. I could I could put an edge back on there. The uh, M three ninety steel, man, it, it, it'd be a pain in the ass. Do you ever encounter issues like with uh, Instagram or or any of the like social media sites where where there's a risk that you're gonna get deplatformed because I, of the I, content I, you I've deal been with? Shadow banned several times because mine is a. Big and is that common with EDC yeah, people? Yes. Well, yeah. it's common. Well, it's common when you have a business page. Number one, and number two, certain hashtags that I use. And uh -huh. plus, since I'm a gun guy, I do take pictures of firearms, which are yeah, uh, we saw briefly. Yeah, uh -huh. there's firearms on there, 
and I'll do a hashtag like two hashtag two A community, hashtag gun nation, hashtag Glock nation, whatever. Th those are examples. Those are shadow banned yeah, hashtags. Like uh -huh. Those get those get uh, the moderators or whoever the algorithm catches those, uh -huh. and then all of a sudden I'm your views are down and you can't bro, explain why. Big time. Yeah. And I have Damn. access to my insights, and I've seen my insights drop from like five thousand. Okay, I'm not it, talking about five. Is it post to post, or is it your overall accounts, or do you think it's, there's a little bit of both? It's it, it's, uh, it's overall because once it happens, it stays like that for months. So I was shadow banned uh, February twenty second, twenty twenty, because I took a picture of a holster in my waistband, mm -hmm. and I was accused of um, teaching people how to unlawfully carry a firearm. When it was holstered. Yeah. And so I was shadow banned. So my insights, which were reaching. Is that because it was an open carry holster in the picture and they were like judging you based off yeah, of some I, other state's I, I, laws I assume, or something? I assume they thought it was open carry, even though we are an open carry state. We are an open carry state. Yeah. And I never carry open carry because I'm not going to make myself a target. Nobody does, yeah. but no, it's there. there are some it's legal. That do. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There are some douches that do. And I, t and, I, and I try to tell them, like. I've never seen anybody else. Well, I mean, I guess you've seen it because of your, your yeah, profession. I yeah. Tell them, I'm like, dude, why. You carrying open carry, I know you think that you're the baddest dude since I It puts you at a disadvantage. Yeah. Yeah. I know you removes the element of surprise. Yeah. yeah I, I, I know you think you're a rooster Cogburn, but. Fucking Smokey and yeah, the Bandit. <laughs> you, you, don't, you don't know. So my mindset, my combat mindset is you don't know where the bad guy is coming from. Right. You don't know where your combat, where your, uh, where your, um, where you're, uh, where you're fighting, uh, what do you call it? Your, your, uh, oh my God. Point, point, like it's a weakness, a point of weakness. Yeah. Or your, your, you, don't, yeah. you don't know where your, where your, where you don't, attack is going to come you from. You don't know where your attack is going to come from and you don't know what your battlefield is going to be. Yeah. So you have to adjust to your battlefield and you better win the fucking fight. So and you can't do that if you don't have the element of surprise. Yes. Yeah. And if you don't know who your enemy is, they know who you are because you're open carrying like a fucking douchebag showing right. everybody that you got a big ass Glock on your hip for the world to see. Cause you want, you think it's cool to carry a pen, you know, you think it's cool to carry a fire rig, right? You know, I mean, dude, I mean, no, I, I, I've seen it on their thigh, bro. I've seen pictures of that. People oh doing that, God, but dude. it's like, I've never seen it in real life. Dude, carrying on their thigh inside of a restaurant. Now, if there's somebody inside that restaurant and they see that and you can't see their gun, they can see yours and they have ill intent. Right. Who do you think they're going to go for? Shoot first? first. Of course. Exactly. Yeah. Paints got, a big yeah. red target. Yeah. And you're sitting there eating your freaking Salisbury steak and mashed potatoes <laughs> and you're going to take a shot to the chest, bro, because you're the first target. Right. You know, whereas me, I'm wearing vans and slacks and T-shirts. And I got a pistol on me, and they these assholes don't. Nobody's know what gonna I know, have, yeah. You know, so that's crazy. I didn't like. I've never seen anybody actually do that. But yeah. anyway, the point is that the algorithm or whoever so, yeah. saw your holster and assumed that it was like breaking unlawful. some law. It was right? unlawful, and, which is not in Texas. What yeah. I teach when I when I do my classes, I teach that. Because we should say, we haven't said uh, like during the episode yet, but you do teach self-defense courses. I do teach self-defense. And right. when I do teach, I always tell my students, you don't, unfortunately, you don't pick the battlefield. So all these guys that buy these $10,000, $5,000, $6,000 kits with like gun belts and, you know, fucking vests and, you know, they got six AR mags and they have a $4,000 knife and, you know, they have all this shit. You know, but you're not wearing that when you go out to eat your Salisbury steak at freaking, right, yeah. you know, what's that uh, Golden Corral or whatever the hell, you know, whatever it is. Gold, yeah, yeah. You know, you're not going to be wearing all that shit. Bud so, Jones. Yeah, Bud Jones. <laughs> yeah, Bud Jones. Bud Jones. You know, you're not going to be wearing all that shit on you. So I tell people, if you want to buy it, fine, buy it. If it makes your heart content, buy it. Me personally, I'll win a gunfight with a t-shirt and slacks because I don't. I mean, I adjust to my battlefield. If somebody wants to turn where I'm at into a battlefield, 
I will adjust to it and I will meet there. I will, I will be where the metal meets the meat. But you're at a disadvantage if you're carrying yes. it open and if, carrying. And if you yeah. have all this, if you have a, a hat that says like, you know, like, um, fucking come and take it from my cold dead hands. Right. You know, yeah. all this, sh- you know, I mean, you're, you're setting yourself up for, I mean, not, I'm not, I don't, I mean, Nothing against people that were, I mean, nothing against people that do that. Cause I mean, I'm patriotic. I'm a patriot. Right. It's just not a tactical mode of operation. Yeah. yeah. You're not going to be at a tactical advantage when you wear a shirt that says come and take it or from my cold dead hands. Yeah. People are going to know, okay, this guy's a fucking, he's got a gun or he, or, you know, or he, there's his gun right there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So me personally, I like to, you know, it's. It's kind of like uh, there's a there's an entire culture revolved around this called like the gray man culture, like blending in. What do you do in terms of like self defense? You mentioned earlier before we came on that you were taught that you teach. Uh, you have a class uh, about real estate or for real estate agents, yeah, like realtors, because they're realtors. because they're going into like random houses. What and oh, there might so. be like crack, like uh, no, 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 dude, people that um, because if you look up like let's just say for example, I looked up the. Um, Oklahoma City Board of Realtors, for example, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to use ours. Right. Yeah. Let's just say, for example, like uh, M- Miami Beach uh, Board of Realtors. Well, you're going to pull up 50 realtors from Miami Beach and some sick bastard might find one attractive female and be like, you know what? I'm going to hit her up about this property, but I don't have any interest in this property, but I'm going to hit her up. And they hit her up and they're like, hey, I'm interested in this property over here. And they're like, okay, well, you know, uh, I want to schedule a viewing. Okay, we can do that. And a lot of them, a lot of realtors, you, you'll notice that today, today's day and age, they do have a certain air of like caution. And they're like, huh, this guy's weird. Why did he hit me up? You know, but some of them are just like, Oh, okay, yeah. Let's Dude, do aren't it. there porns like that? But it's like, I yeah. mean, obviously the porn yeah. has a happy ending, there but it's is, like the there, realtor yeah, porn. porn. Yeah, <laughs> real, there is realtor porn. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. I don't know why that came up, dude. No, My bad. But there, but, there, but there is, dude. Yes, there, there is. is yeah. So, but <clears throat> there is. And, you know, like a uh, hot realtor, you know, uh, buffs client. Right, you yeah. Know, like, whatever. <laughs> you know, like, oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. So, but, but okay, so. The titles goes, are the worst. That yeah. goes back to that. I've said too, I think that the law, I mean, the, 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 the advent of the internet has bred an entirely new type of criminal, a more, a more sick criminal at that, because they're able to look up all kinds of shit. And then they see this shit and they think it's normal. They, they see it. The more they see it, they, the more they normalize it. And then they're like, you know what? I want to act it out. So then they'll look up Miami Beach Board of Realtors and then they'll find a realtor that they think that they can, you know, act it out on and then they'll use it. This and shit happens. This shit happens. It happens. That's why I've been called to go teach and self-defense here and there and here and there and everywhere. Yeah. Because it's happened. I mean, hell, what happened on Mandara Road when that guy went in there and he shot like, what, three realtors and then took one hostage? Oh, really? Yeah. That I, was, I don't yeah, remember that. Was, that what, yeah. five, Five years ago, mm. so I started teaching self defense, and a lot of them don't carry handguns. But I, but I start, but that's that goes back to the EDC where I got into EDC because I was looking for pins because I was teaching people how to fight with pins. Like you know, like they have their pen, like they're pretending to write, and they have an uneasy feeling about the bad guy, so they have their pen and they're holding it, you know, tip down. You uh-huh. know, they got their finger in a way that they can defend themselves yes, if they're that attacked. Way, yeah. if they, you know, and. My fighting style is always, you know, block and strike. You know, it's always block and strike. You know, and then you you come you come down, then you bring it back, and then you bring you you bring it back, come towards your body, and you hit. And then that is that's what I teach. And there's that they sell tons of pens that are like twelve, ten, seven dollars that are perfect for you know, that gotcha. explains it, dude. Sometimes I would see like your EDC kits that you post and I'm like, all right, that's a nice pen that matches that knife that they're going to use. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> I was like, okay, that's cool. They have a matching pen, you know, maybe they have something else, but oh, okay. Oh, I get it. Up, Did you up. see one of them or no, 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 no. 
So go up a little bit more. Uh -huh. That that green knife in the middle, right here. Uh -huh. That's the knife that uh, lent to me meeting my uh, really good friend. I traded that knife to a buddy of mine, and ever since then, him and I became like. That's the knife that we talked about that's earlier. The knife we oh, talked okay. About. I, traded, right. I traded that knife right there for one of his knives. And that was like my first dealing with anybody on Instagram. Oh, and okay. That is what led me to believe that, hey, there's some great people in this community. Right. So. Yeah, like I said, like that, uh, that kind of, uh, uh, those kind of gentleman agreements don't take place anymore. No, you dude, know? But and not, see, not, in, not yeah, frequently anyway. You'll see them a lot in the DC community. That's cool, man. Um, I think we pretty much hit everything. We mentioned deplatforming shadow banning we talked about guns and politics um i think it's a pretty good episode we're running up on a minute 35 uh is there anything else that you wanted to uh discuss before uh we go out no bro i, I, I appreciate you um yeah i'm glad you came like this was fun i was excited about this because i knew that it was like we're gonna get into some some sensitive issues like um, yeah, this was cool, man. I'm glad that you invited me, and I'm glad that uh, that you allowed me to, you know, to to speak freely, basically. You know, because, yeah, dude. You know, um, well, we've been friends for a long time. You know, like there's yeah, no need I mean, to. Yeah, like, we grew up together. Hell. Yeah. So cool, man. Um, well, I think we're gonna get out of here, uh, guys. I didn't mention. I, I didn't mention anything about uh, Bitcoin. I might take the uh, the the. Uh, significant trades off of the screen and we might just go like uh uh just with the webcams uh but i had a good time uh i'm glad you came over and uh i think we're gonna get out of here dude i need to work on my on my software uh or my processor because sometimes my processor be slowing down like right at the end and i don't know if it's because i like already like recorded like two three gigabytes of video oh yeah or whatever but it always it always takes time and i always end up doing this i always end up like kind of like trying to stretch it out like a, another minute or two and uh and uh Anyway, I end up having like these little fucking issues right at the end. So, um, no, but um, that's it. I think we have audio coming in and um, we're going to get out of here. So, uh, Bitcoin trading at 16,182. It's 10.08 p.m. on the 13th of November and we're out of here. Doesn't really